What up guys? Welcome to Process Heat Transfer and I'm Salihin. I'll be your mentor throughout this paper. Now, let's have a look at chapter 1 which easily called Introduction to Heat Transfer. Well, basically this is more to introduction and repeat on what you've learned or what you've known at least something be throughout your matriculation or SPM or high school. So let's first have a look on the summary on what we will be learning throughout this chapter. Let me go to Photoshop and so here it is introduction to heat transfer so at first we're gonna look at the term heat itself and the temperature uh, later we're gonna differentiate a bit on what is heat and what is temperature and then after that we go to specific heat we're gonna use this term a lot specific heat in heat transfer and then we go to the three modes of heat transfer. As I said, there's three modes of heat transfer, which is conduction, convection, and what was the last one? I forgot. Radiation. And then the last part is application of heat transfer. What's what? What heat transfer is used for? Basically, in engineering uh, application or life application. So these five subtopic is we're gonna through we're gonna go through in this section or topic or whatever it is. So let's get going. Back to the lecture slide. So let's look at heat itself. The term of heat. So Heat is the form of energy that can be transferred from one system to another as a result of temperature difference. So if there's a temperature difference between two medium, heat will heat transfer will occur and yeah, the the final point is the larger the temperature gradient, the higher the rate of heat transfer. So if next to the next slide. So Let's say a hot coffee of 70 degrees C to the cold environment. So the heat will be transferred from the hot coffee to the cool environment. So you can feel it's getting hotter uh, when the coffee is hotter. And if the coffee is, let's say, 95, so there's a lot more of heat transfer to the environment due to the larger temperature the higher temperature not larger than temperature so heat will uh, move from warmer substance to the cooler substance so from hot to cold so heat transfer will keep co keep continuing until it achieve the same temperature so let's say the hot coffee from 70 to 20 degree room temperature so in the end if the room the room temperature will increase slightly until the hot coffee get uh, reach, reach the same temperature as the as the atmospheric pressure atmos atmosphere room temperature whatever it is oh my lord All right so here's the question why to study heat transfer is it to study the rate of heat being transferred or how long the process takes place to transfer such amount of heat from one state to another as a result of temperature different? So the answer is yes. So the difference between thermodynamic and heat transfer, yes, you learn thermodynamic, uh, but this is heat transfer. So heat transfer is the rate of heat transfer, the rate of heat transfer and the times of cooling and heating. So in the end, you can find the amount of energy transferred from a system to another system and you can find the time of the process to get cooled to a certain temperature, from a certain temperature to a certain temperature or heating from a certain temperature to a higher temperature. 
So the thermodynamic is you learn a lot more, but heat transfer is more straightforward. Uh, let's look at term heat. So heat, the symbol for heat is Q. So units is in watt. So in SI system is in calorie, and British thermal unit in English is the in English system they call it BTU. So that's part of heat. So um, just be careful if you Google heat in yeah in the internet you might find something else. So yeah yeah you're over eighteen so just Google it. All right, let's move on. Now let's look at temperature. So temperature is a me is to measure the amount of energy possessed by molecules of the substance. So basically, a uh, substance, a uh, liquid or solid, under at a temperature determines the amount of energy in the solid or liquid. But we can use temperature like we discussed before. You can use to predict the direction of heat transfer. Let's say the hot coffee before. If it's hot, then the room temperature is cooler. So the heat transfer will, will move from the higher temperature to the lower temperature. As I said before, the temperature is sort of the amount of energy. So the energy we will move from the higher energy level to a lower energy level which is from the hot coffee with high energy to the cooler ambient cooler and room temperature with a lower temperature i think that's so so here's the temperature the symbol is t while the heat symbol is amount of heat transfer is t uh, is temperature is t sorry temperature is t while the heat uh, is q which is you can say this amount of energy amount of energy transfer sorry so the co common scale for measuring temperature is celsius kelvin rankine and fahrenheit so this is the basic for temperature value all right let, so that's pretty quick uh, so let's move to specific heat now let's look at the specific heat. So specific heat is defined as the energy required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a substance by one degree. So the common unit for specific heat is kilojoule per kilogram Celsius. So let's say a specific heat of is 5 kilojoule per kilogram, let's say Celsius here, not Kelvin. So the amount of energy required to raise the substance temperature by one degree is five kilojoule. I mean, the sorry, I'll, I'll change that back. So the amount of energy to increase one kilogram of substance by one degree is five kilojoule. So that sounds right. So specific heat. So there's, yeah, it says here there's two type of specific heat. So we most of us. In this chapter, we'll be using Cp, which is the energy required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a substance by one degree as the pressure is held constant. So, yeah, we're going to use this a lot. So, it says normally Cp is bigger than Cv. But for ideal gas, Cp is equal to Cv plus R. So, R is a constant, I guess. For incompressible substance such as solid and liquid, C Cp is slight is equivalent to Cv, Cv and C. So you can use a anything provided. Now let's to the next topic. So now let's look at the modes of heat transfer. So in this paper, we're gonna cover three main heat transfer modes which is the first is conduction convection and radiation so let's look at the picture and so here is conduction is heat transfer through solid 
and the convection is heat transfer through liquid or fluid, they, they so call it, and radiation is heat transfer through no medium at all. So, yeah, we we call we'll come across it later throughout the topic. So let's look at the main equation that we will be using for these modes. So let me go into my Photoshop and yeah. So in so let's first let's go with conduction and. So for conduction, we'll be using Fourier's law of heat conduction, which uh, this is the equation. Let me. So here's the equation, and throughout the topic, throughout the paper, we'll use this as the main equation for conduction. While for convection, we'll be using Newton's law of cooling. So here is the main equation yeah and the last part is the radiation is we use the Stephen Boltzmann constant or oh no sorry Stephen Boltzmann law and in here there's the Boltzmann constant or Stephen constant which is I think this equation and this is available in your calculator too so it's easy to memorize it so, yeah, so this is the final equation for radiation. So for conduction, convection and radiation. With conduction and convection, the temperature, you can use it either both Celsius or Kelvin. But for Stephen Boltzmann uh, equation, the temperature must be in Kelvin. So, yeah, so that's the rule. So... To be safe for all this equation is the safest way to use Kelvin so you don't have there's no mistake later on particularly during the exam yeah a lot of students did this mistake so I think it's safe to stay in Kelvin so if you have a let's say you you are given the temperature of Celsius so change it to Kelvin convert it to Kelvin if you have if you have to Fahrenheit convert it to Kelvin if you have Rankine convert it to Kelvin so that's basically it now let's look at the so we've covered heat temperature specific heat and modes of heat transfer Let, let's look at the application of heat transfer now let's look at the application of heat transfer in the industry. So there's most of heat transfer is uh, applicable for all these industries: chemtech, environment, food tech, poly polytech, and biotech. So let's first look at the first example. So in chemtech, mostly heat transfer is in distillation column, the furnace and the heat exchanger system which is this is a huge as heat exchanger so in distillation column you mostly use in uh, petroleum petroleum separation and the furnace is if you want to burn something or you want to melt steel melt iron ore to make steel and the heat exchanger is very common in industry too the this type of heat exchanger and next let's look at the heat exchanger so this is uh, an example of shell and tube heat exchanger mostly they use it in food food technology so basically uh, a coal a coal fluid will enter um, at the end here and the there's a hot hot fluid throughout the baffle throughout the inside the shell so which like like we said before heat is uh, transferred from hot to cold so if you want to heat up milk so you put it put in hot water so the milk will heat up uh, before it's, it's been sprayed drier to get your the normal powdered milk so in biotech is mostly they use it in autoclave or in bioreactor 
So, yeah, bioreactor is basically heating up fluid, which is more like a kettle, but you can control the temperature. While autoclave, uh, as I, I can remember, is you heat up to 121 or 160 for a certain amount of time to kill the bacteria. So, that's involved heat exchanging to heat exchanger too so next let's look at the environmental so which is this is the cooling tower i think in my set you you can find this too around and the other one is incinerator which is you incinerate rubbish or solid solid waste into ash so basically the heat exchanger is used to incinerate to reduce the volume of the uh, solid waste and yeah the heat transfer is used basically the heat transfer technology is to you use just uh, enough just enough amount of energy to incinerate not to waste any energy because yeah it's basically optimization so in food tech the uh, the normal is microwave oven pasteurization and you know, the basic is refrigeration uh, you learn a lot more of refrigeration in thermodynamic and I, there's the last last slide here and this is the true application of heat transfer which is injection molding so if you want to mold a specific amount of a uh, specific plastic to a basic shape that you design so basically you add up a plastic powder and the heat is applied and it was extruded to the mold and in the end the heat will melt the plastic and in the end you produce the shape that you wanted so the uh, the initial is just the powder and the final is the plastic that you always see everywhere such as the plastic bottle and yada yada yeah. and the uh, last is ex extrusion so the heat is applied and then the product is extruded so uh, through the dye so in the end you make a you want to make a cylinder a plastic cylinder or something throughout this extrusion and this also applied in food technology because you put like um, a powdery food product powdery raw product and in the end with the extrusion it end up as twisties or super ring or whatever you find in tesco and other giant so this is how they do it in food manufacturing i said a lot of food because my degree is i did quite a lot of food product yeah so I guess that's all for the introduction and we'll go to the next chapter which is chapter 2 uh, which is conduction chapter 3 is convection chapter 4 is radiation and the final chapter is the we learn about heat heat exchanger is itself so we apply everything from chapter 2 onto chapter 4 we apply everything into the chapter 5 Alright, so that's all for chapter 1 and I guess you enjoy it. Alright, thank you.